So what I want to share with you today is these two new paintings and I want to share a little bit of the backstory of why I painted them, how they're significant to me. And for those of you not already familiar with the myth of Persephone, I'm going to run through that pretty quickly um, so that you have some sense of context. So the, the story of Persephone from Greek mythology is that Persephone as a young girl was picking flowers in a field and this painting right here is that Persephone. Um, she embodied uh, youthfulness, um, a naivete, and innocence. So there she was picking flowers when Hades, god of the underworld, reaches up and pulls her down into his realm and abducts her. And in most stories, he rapes her. So Hades, as god of the underworld, he has two other brothers. One is Zeus, who is the sky god, and the other Poseidon, who is the god of the sea. So the underworld is the world of darkness, it's the world of psyche, it's the world of the shadow, the unconscious, and also his domain held vast riches, which to me is a metaphor for the riches when we begin not mining but navigating and journeying deeper into the realms of the unconscious and the soul. So below the soil, below the top layer, as we go down. So he pulls her down and she becomes his queen, but it doesn't happen overnight. So Demeter, Persephone's mother, is the goddess of the harvest, of grains, etc. When her daughter Persephone goes missing, she goes into a deep grief and long story short, she, um, she begins to sabotage the, the harvest and people begin to starve. So finally that captures the attention of Zeus who turns to his brother Hades and is like, dude, you, you need to let her go. So Hades says, okay, I'll do that. And as he's escorting Persephone back up to this realm, he gives her a pomegranate from which she eats and then she rises and her mom greets her with joy and she's so happy and grateful to have her daughter back and then she's like but wait you didn't eat anything in the underworld did you and the reason for her panic is that apparently if you eat food from the underworld you are then um some some link or chain happens because of her eating the, the pomegranate seeds, she was, every, every year she returned in autumn and winter and down to the underworld. And then in spring, she would come up and curious to me, that's actually an origin myth of how the seasons were actually made, how they came into being. So the real key in here is that when Demeter asks her daughter, did you eat anything from the underworld? Persephone says, uh, yeah, and Hades, Hades made me, he made me eat the pomegranate seeds, which of course we know is a lie. And it's important because up to that point in the story, Persephone embodies this, um, like I said, this naivete and innocence. And in a way she's a victim to her circumstance. She's more of a passive receiver of experience rather than an active director of her experience. But this is the first time that she actually claims to be a victim. So that's like right here, like right, right between these two paintings is her abduction into the underworld. And then what happens over time is that she matures Get, she keeps going down, she comes back up. Some say that she actually falls in love with, with Hades, that there's actually real love there, and that she falls in love with the underworld. 
she then ripens over time and matures into her role as queen of the underworld beside Hades and she welcomes travelers who are coming down from above down into the underworld she welcomes them with with kindness with grace with a grace and regality that is befitting a queen and she actually shows them through the underworld which is this painting right here her um taking her throne so that's the mythology and the reason that i painted this is that um a woman named jean shinoda Berlin wrote some books back in the 80s and one of them is called goddesses and every woman and in it she describes the not only the mythology but how we as human beings can be influenced by these different archetypes Boleyn says that for some girls as they become women they carry the archetype of persephone more strongly than other women and how she can live in them is either she continues as this uh, victim or she does the work, the woman does the work to ripen the archetypal energy into the queen of the underworld. How this applies to me is that as a man, every man having in Jung's terms an anima, an inner feminine aspect, there are like one or two feminine archetypes that'll be louder inside of, inside of a man's psyche. And for me, one of the loudest is Persephone. How that shows up and has shown up my entire life is being very passive, far more receptive to what's going on around me than self-directed, some distance from the physical world, like so deep in the underworld that I forget to eat. Uh, it's hard to take care of myself, um, my body, my sleep, or how to clothe myself, or that I need to buy new clothes. Um, trouble, challenges, paying bills, like all these things that are like the day-to-day -day things of how to, how to live a life engaged in this realm, meaning above the underworld. And so much of my attention goes down into the underworld in the realm of the psyche, which um, maybe I'll say this in another video. And actually, I just had the thought, maybe I'll make another painting of Hades because as a masculine archetype, he's one of the two that speaks really loudly, loudly in me. So, wow, I'm saying way more than I thought I would about all this. Um, so that process of maturing from the victim to claiming the power of queen of the underworld that we all have and that um, that process is what Boleyn would call and what I would call an alchemical process like it's it's taking something and actually changing the very nature of it the essence of it into something else while also retaining some essential quality because she's still she's still Persephone but there's something really huge in the catalytic uh, process of becoming something new so for me when I paint um, if I just had one painting up here every painting I make is some kind of alchemical process where I'm working something inside myself and then I have a painting to show for it, an artifact. Um, and I've been trying to talk more about my process. Like when I write, when I, when I paint these little paintings, I'll do a little writing that goes along with it. That kind of reveals a little bit of the underworld that's happening inside of me through the process of painting. But this is a different kind of display because it's two paintings showing the transformation from one painting to the next even though each painting itself is a process. So these actually depict the process across paintings. One of the things that I'm really excited about is that 
I'm offering these paintings not individually but as a set with the with the idea being they're infused with the the energetic of Persephone by the very nature of that being the subject matter but my intention is that they actually transmit the alchemical process from naivete into maturation and the claiming of power of uh, being able to navigate not only navigate the realms of the unconscious but also to guide others i'm excited to offer them to you hoping that someone resonates with with the story with the mythology with the with the transformation the, the work that it takes and the fruits that are given and received from doing work of this nature having it in your space not only as a reminder but as a potent um i've never talked about my work in this way before so <laughs> it's different but it feels really true like as a catalyst for deepening the work that may be happening in you if you enjoyed this video um, you can subscribe and become the 37th subscriber to my channel and then get notifications the next time i do another painting and another kind of walkthrough like this so until then uh blessings on your journey through the underworld. And it's always good to come back up and get some fresh air, which is what I'm gonna do now.